Hey guys, this is Austin, and the iPad is better than a console gaming. Let me explain. This is the iPad Pro, and there are a few reasons why it's become much better for gaming recently. One of the big ones is a very fundamental issue from previously, controller support. Now with iPad OS, you have native support for not only the Xbox One gamepad, but also the DualShock 4 from the PS4. The real key advantage here is what Apple calls their ProMotion display. Now this is essentially a 120 frame per second display which ships on all iPad Pros. Now the idea here is very straightforward. At 120 frames per second, you're getting twice the amount of frames, and therefore you're going to get gameplay and well, pretty much everything else running twice as smoothly as pretty much any kind of standard panel. This is important because it's a feature that you really can't get on other consoles, such as the PS4 or the Switch. Now because it runs at such a high refresh rate, previously the only other way to really get that kind of performance was with a fairly high-end gaming PC as well as an expensive gaming monitor. Sure, that's definitely going to be the ultimate way to play, but it's not cheap and it's not anywhere near as portable as something like the iPad Pro. Now this is changing soon. The next generation PlayStation 5 as well as the Xbox Series X both will support higher frame rates such as 120 FPS, but the downside there is that while the hardware might be capable, you still need some kind of display or TV that can give you that full 120 frames per second experience. That's actually one of the main advantages of something like a Nintendo Switch, or in this case, an iPad. Because Apple controls the entire ecosystem, they can just say, oh, you know what? We're going to put everything we need to make this work. The screen, the software, the spec, everything can be in one single package. Whereas with consoles and everything, it's a little bit more... It's possible, but it's obviously taking a lot longer to get to that very, very smooth gaming experience that obviously everyone wants. Now, when you look at this side by side with something like the Switch, it's a very interesting comparison. Now, Nintendo in a lot of ways has these same advantages. This is a portable console, so the screen is built in. They can easily ship it with high frame rate options. The difference though, is that the Switch by itself is not powerful enough to really take advantage of 120 FPS. I mean, most Switch games run at like 30. And that's where Apple does have a big advantage here, right? They are building that chip inside, which is incredibly well optimized and very, very powerful for a mobile device. Pair that with the advantage that the iPad is very frequently getting updates with better hardware and more performance, whereas a console such as the Switch or the PS4 might go three, four, or even five years without any kind of meaningful performance update and you've got yourself a recipe for what actually could be a real gaming powerhouse. I almost called it a console, but it's not quite. But they're making actually some serious progress. Pro progress. Wow. Progress. Progress. Hey, be nice, Ken. Be nice. The idea for this video actually came about because Epic recently added full 120 frame per second support inside Fortnite. Now, yes, you're probably over listening to Fortnite and, well, I actually think it is a good example for this video. So now I did this completely blow up my Twitter, but almost more importantly, this is one of those very few games that will run not only as a AAA game across a wide variety of platforms like the PS4, the Switch, and the iPad, but importantly, it is one of the very few games that actually does support that full 120 frames per second running on the latest generation iPad Pro. To illustrate my point, I have three different systems to try. So first of all, we have the Nintendo Switch, which operates with a 30 FPS cap. We also have the PS4 Pro, which can go up to 60 frames per second. And then we'll have the iPad Pro running at that full 120 frames per second. Now, because this is a YouTube video and you can't really see the difference between 60 and 120, we are taking advantage of our red camera running in slow motion. So right now it's set to 5K resolution at a full 120 frames per second. So once we slow that down, you actually should be able to see a pretty significant difference between all three of these setups. Because really when it comes to frame rate, when it comes to this stuff, you really do need the absolute maximum in responsiveness. And I think that this is sort of really where the iPad theoretically should be way, way better. Although graphics wise, maybe not, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, you can see that gets really stuttery. I mean, we're going well below 30 frames per second here. Now what I like about looking at the slow motion feed is that because this is a 60 frame per second display which is running at 30, you should see a brand new frame every 33.3 milliseconds. However, what you're actually seeing is that a lot of frames are being duplicated, which means that there's sort of that jutter, that stutter. It doesn't look as smooth as it should be, even though theoretically this is a full 30 frame per second game. But yeah, I mean, that's not a great experience. I mean, it, it's kind of playable, it's okay, 
but it is nowhere near as smooth as something like a PS4 and especially not as good as I hope the iPad will be. So this is actually fairly comparable to what you could get on your phone, although I know Fortnite on the most recent generation of iPhone actually does run at 60 frames per second. And in fact, on iOS, actually Fortnite's pretty well optimized because you actually can get into the settings and tweak it if you want better graphics or higher frame rates. You can kind of tweak things like on the PC, whereas on the Switch and on the PS4, it's kind of like you get what you get. So I think actually Fortnite is probably better on a phone than on your Switch. But let's try the PS4 now. Yeah, I mean, we can immediately see the PS4 runs a lot smoother than the Switch did. Not only is it not really dropping frames, it's staying pretty consistent at 60, but we also have twice as many frames to look at. Now, there's a lot of sort of talk about why frame rate matters, and I could go a lot more in depth on it, but essentially the idea is that when you get more frames per second, there's less latency between when you press a button or click something or do anything, and when you actually see it reflected in the game. So for example, if we're playing on the Switch, you should get a new frame every 33.3 milliseconds. That's still pretty quick. However, if say I'm playing on PS4 against you and I get a new frame every 16 milliseconds or basically twice as fast, it means that I have a real competitive advantage. There's less time between when I press that button and when I get the headshot or miss my shot, which is more realistic. The way to think about frame rate is twofold. You can see the smoothness, right? I mean, if you're playing a 30 versus 60 versus 120, obviously it looks better but it also will make you better at games because if you're playing on the Switch and you have 30 frames per second and I'm playing on the iPad at 120, you have to wait four times as long to get a new frame if I step to the left or step to the right as I do. Now obviously none of this is ideal because there are obviously variables all across, but generally speaking, a higher frame rate not only looks smoother, but also will give you a much more substantial advantage when it comes to I see what you're doing or you see what I'm doing 20 milliseconds later, or whatever the case is. Does it's that make sense? one more thing to make you better. So after all of this talk about frame rate and why it matters, it's time to actually try the iPad Pro version of Fortnite. So if we hop into the settings, we actually have a couple of different options. So you can actually cap the frame rate at 20, 30, 60, or 120. And then if we go into the quality presets, you can go low, medium, high, or epic. So if we do epic, it's 30 FPS. High, I think, is maximum of 60. Yeah, and if we go to 120, it sort of defaults us to medium. So with our PS4 controller paired, let's see exactly how smooth 120 frames per second is on the iPad, and whether I should throw the PlayStation in the garbage. No more gaming PCs. iPad gamers only. Rise up. Dude, that latency is crazy. I mean, literally it feels like as soon as I tap that stick, I'm immediately jumping in. And that frame rate's actually staying pretty stable. Now, mind you, it is definitely running at a fairly low resolution. And to give sort of some of these other consoles, specifically the PS4, some credit, you are making some cutbacks. For example, draw distance is not as far. So while you might have a better response time against someone, you might not be able to see them as far into the distance. But the smoothness of this experience is really hard to get away from. I mean, that is, and that's a really solid 120 FPS. I mean, we can definitely pull it up on the slow motion, but like generally just sort of to my eye, this is incredibly smooth. I can immediately say, while yeah, the settings are a little bit distracting, I mean, you can see like it's literally drawing in the light in front. But yeah, there's no doubt that this is a better experience. Like if you're gonna ask me whether I wanna play on the PS4 or the iPad, I'm gonna say iPad here. You just can't get away from the fact that this is such a smooth experience. Now mind you, if I want better quality, I can just hop into the settings and switch it over to say Epic. Oh, okay, I can't change it while I'm in a match. But theoretically, if I do want higher quality graphics, I can just turn that setting down and I'll just lose some frame rate. But if you want sort of the maximum smooth experience, it's crazy to me that an iPad will give you that and it's gonna look better than literally any console you can buy right now. That's pretty cool. Also, you can take this one somewhere and that one you kind of can, but that's a little harder. That essentially looks like we're getting, I mean, you can see, we're running at 120 frames per second and it looks dead smooth. I'm actually surprised it's not even like really dipping too much. I feel like if I get into some action, I might drop a little bit, but that's impressive. Especially if you put the iPad side by side with the Switch. Well, yes, with these graphic settings, it looks a little blurrier, but the difference is night and day between the responsiveness of 30 versus 120 frames per second. And again, these are two mobile devices. This is really impressive. Like when I heard 120 frames per second, I figured they had just uncapped the frame rate and it would kind of be bouncing around. But at least for fairly standard gameplay, you were getting that full experience on an iPad. Now, is that iPad more expensive than a Switch? Absolutely. But, I mean, we've come a long way for mobile devices and I love the fact 
but you can get such a smooth frame rate, such a real gaming experience, especially with the controller, on something which no one would ever look twice at. You can pull out your iPad in every coffee shop in the world and they think you're gonna be writing your, your thesis or you're watching YouTube, but instead what you're doing is you're beating people in Fortnite at 120 frames per second. It's okay, I won't tell. It is a brave new world, my friends, but if you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna know more about this kind of stuff, we did a video at CES with a ridiculous 360 frame per second monitor from ASUS, so you guys can go check that out over here. And until next time, I'm now an iPad Fortnite gamer, so there's that, I guess.